Welcome to our Comcap Media Roundtable about hemp, the multi-billion dollar crop. Not the stuff that makes you high and dizzy, but ingredients that make us healthier and stronger. Men have been using hemp for thousands of years. Explorers discovered continents on boats with sails and ropes made of hemp. Physicians used it for medicine. And then hemp was vilified for its exhilarating THC. Mariana was banned, but alcohol thrived. Fiber, oil, and fuel of hemp were banned, whereas cotton, nylon, and petrol thrived. Today, companies in Canada and Germany grow industrial hemp and use it for foods, cosmetics, and medicine against severe forms of epilepsy. More and more consumers, patients, and their suppliers are just discovering how this old plant may improve their lives. That's why I now talk about this with Craig Goodwin, CEO, director, and founder of Naturally Splendid Enterprises in Vancouver, Canada. They sell hemp seeds to consumers, export hundreds of tons of it to South Korea, and extract healthy, active substances. David Wolf is a nutritionist and author of bestsellers like Superfoods, Longevity Now, or Sun Food Cuisine. He loves hemp for what it gives us for our healthier and happier lives. Joscha Kraus is product manager with a Berlin-based medical hemp company. They extract CBD, cannabidol, a substance physicians use, for example, to help children with severe epilepsy. Raphael Dulon, founder and CEO of the German Hunt Farm Company, grows and harvests hemp, sells seeds, oils and related products to consumers and companies like Medical Hemp. Simon Scholes, a chartered financial analyst with First Berlin Equity Research, sees investment opportunities in the global hemp industries developing after the ban is being lifted. Craig, what do you make of hemp? Well, you know, we make some very basic products like most other hemp companies. We harvest and, and shell the seeds to produce a, a product we call shelled uh, hemp seed hearts. We also produce hemp protein and hemp oil. And those are our basic products. We've also invested significantly in extraction and formulation techniques uh, to take these products and enhance them even further. What can this do to my health? You know, the plant... What is good in it? it just about everything. Uh, it has the most digestible protein of any plant on earth. It has a fantastic ratio of omegas. In fact, the World Health Organization recognizes it as the perfect balance of omega-3 and omega-6. Uh, it has an amazing fiber profile. So the plant itself is one of the most nutritional plants that have ever been known to be on earth. David, you're a nutritionist. You wrote the bestseller, Superfoods. Why are you so in love with hemp? <laughs> it's so easy to grow. It's so e easy to harvest. That's one of the great things about hemp is getting the seed or threshing the seed out of the plant is so much easier than wheat or rice. Also, as Craig was saying, it's got the ideal ratio of omega-6 to omega-3, but also contains the anti-inflammatory gamma-linolenic acid, or GLA. The protein that's in hemp, we call adestin. It's a globular protein. So not only is it an ideal protein and a complete protein, but it's easy to absorb and it helps our blood to develop albumin, which is a super transporter. And one more thing about hemp is its trace mineral array is about 20 trace minerals, making it one of the most unusual and one of the most important seed crops that we have in the world. Yosha, what do you extract from hemp? We extract actually CBD, so-called cannabidiol, from industrial hemp. Uh, we have fields in northern Berlin where we grow the hemp and we harvest the hemp, we dry it and then we extract it. What does that look like if you extract cannabidiol? Uh, cannabidiol, it's a multi-component uh, extract actually, so it consists of cannabidiol but it also consists of uh, terpenes, of flavonoids, of plant waxes and chlorophyll. Mm -hmm. And who needs that? CBD has very strong antioxidant effects, it has very good anti-inflammatory effects, um, as well as it can help for severe morbus Crohn for different chronic auto-inflammatory diseases, yes. There's actually medication on the German and the Swiss market since yes. 2011 and 2013 that has CBD. What is that? Well, there is a, a pharmaceutical company called GW Pharmaceuticals who is offering uh, pharmaceutical products. Uh, the first one is Sativex. 
It's a mix from CBD and THC. And the second one is right now in the pipeline. It's called Epidiolex. It's against uh, epilepsy, yes. Mm -hmm. David, you have a colleague who has a child that needs CBD. Why? Tell us that story. CBD is a very important neuroprotective substance. It's one of the most powerful neuroprotective substances ever found. And this really hits home when you have somebody who works for you, as one of these gals works for me, who has a child who has a neurological disorder. So it started out about seven years ago with twitching. And this is actually a mild form of seizures, but they didn't recognize it. They didn't understand what was going on. And then later it got worse and worse and eventually got to grand mal seizures. They eventually found out about CBD and found that if it was progressing from the twitching into a grand mal seizure, a mega dose of CBD would stop it. And they also found that CBD did not interfere with other medications, but they found that the other medications were they had more side effects. And so that led them to focus just on CBD as their primary form of medication to deal with the seizure disorder. So this is something you can imagine being a mom and having a child that's in this situation. This has been going on for seven years, but now they understand it because of CBD, they're able to stop it. And this is a, just a complete game changer for anybody who's had a child dealing with any kind of seizure disorder, really at all ages, because I've also seen this being very effective at children who are three years old or four years old or five years old, just as well as in this case, this, this young lady at 14 years old started having problems, now she's 21, but CBD is also effective for that age range as well. So it's very interesting, it's not age specific. It actually can be very helpful for even a very young child. The medication Epidiolex is now being tried. It may be on the market mid next year. It's now being tried on 240 children in America who have had severe seizures of epilepsy. Yeah. What is the result of that? Well, on average, the seizures dropped uh, by half, and for 9%, the seizures stopped completely. So that's pretty impressive. That is a pretty impressive result yes. for CBD, for CBD a yeah. component that is so natural. Yeah. What more use do you already see and who buys CBD from you now? Well, if you see, there are three different markets more or less. You have the functional food market. Uh, think about valerian, for example. So people uh, want plant-based sedatives, for example, or uh, they want a strong antioxidants um, and also for anti-inflammatory purposes. Uh, the next thing is cosmeceuticals. People want to treat applications in, include, for example, uh, treatment of psoriasis or from acne vulgaris. And the third one, of course, is the pharmaceutical market where, for example, you mentioned it before, Epidi uh, Epidiolex or Sativex. Mm -hmm. To treat schizophrenia, to treat uh, epilepsy, to treat morbus Crohn. So there's a huge variety of diseases you can treat with CBD. Mm -hmm. David. How does this change my health if I, in my mind, and how do I get through the day better if I take in like uh, omega-3, 6, 9? What is that and what does it do to me? Well, when we're dealing with omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6 fatty acids, these are very powerful anti-inflammatories, especially in the right ratio, which hemp has the correct ratio, about 3.3, 3.4 to 1. Now, what's also interesting, with CBD added into the mix, what we're looking at is a very powerful neurotropic, which means that it's an excellent brain substance. It can be felt almost immediately, and it protects your nervous system as well. When you put all this together, we're looking at an ideal food for the developing brains of children. We're looking at an ideal food for the elderly who are dealing with more Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's than ever before. And we're also looking at an ideal food for folks like us in our age group where we're looking to get to that peak mental performance state. That's why hemp is surging right now because it's meeting all the demands for all ages and markets. Where do you see the market for all your different groups? Is it people like us who want to live better, work better, and have our minds working better? Absolutely, and everybody else as well. It's meant for the young, the old, 
male, female, whether you're active physically, um, you want to use it for sports or training, or just to be healthier every day. The base products of hemp seed, protein, and oil should be in everybody's diet every single day. Um, as far as the extracts at CBD, we are very much um, encouraged by some of the results that we've seen as well. The product range and the applications for it are practically endless. Um, unfortunately, there are some regulatory roadblocks in different jurisdictions. Um, for example, the extraction and formulation in Germany is allowed. In Canada at this point, it's not allowed. But those regulations are changing. The environment is becoming far more accepting to these ingredients. Um, we're still watching the United States use CBDs more and more every day. Um, and there is no doubt the regulatory environment is changing. So Naturally Splendid's position is we have some base products of hemp seed and oil and protein, which we can market globally now as a functional food. And as the regulatory environment continues to positively evolve globally, it's opening up so much more opportunity. And in fact, Naturally Splendid has positioned itself very well indeed by investing in science and technology, research and development, and has also purchased 50% of a processing facility that allows for the extraction and formulation not only of omegas, but as the regulatory environment evolves to cannabinoids such as cannabidiol. How did you feel um, the environment was for you when you started working for medical hemp? How many prejudices is there in the world? How many people look at you like, you're doing drugs? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Like in the beginning, a lot of people were, are you, are you serious about this? Is, is it legal? That was one of the most questions. Oh, what are you doing? Is it legal or illegal? You're doing, you're, you're working with hemp, with cannabis actually. Can you, is that allowed in Germany? But yes, because we work with industrial hemp, so it has very low THC, it's below 0.2%. So yes, it's allowed <laughs> and it's... And it's being tested and, and checked it's been tested, also. People walk to yes. your fields and... Yes, of course, we have authorities checking our uh, THC <coughs> levels and also later on for the, for the extract, so everything is fine and mm -hmm. within the law. Where do you see the growth opportunity in your market? Who do you believe of those among those countries and clients you already have will discover it more? Well, I, th I think the American market is huge. Definitely, but also the European market. The European market is still very undeveloped in regards to cannabidiol. Also interesting market and very big market is the Asian market. Asian market is, I think there's no CBD there. Like it started a little bit in Japan, but there is a huge potential still there, yes. David, how do you explain that we've been discovering this now? Because we're talking about a plan that's been there for thousands of years, thinking that Continents would not have been discovered without hemp for ropes and sails. People used hemp to pull water out of their wells. And how come all of a sudden it was vilified? We're dealing with a world where certain, certain interests want their products in front of you and certain in interests would rather vilify certain products to make sure that their products get sold versus for example, hemp products. Now, something like that and a, and a marketing campaign like that can only work for so long. Hemp is so easy to grow. It's so easy to process. It's so easy to eat. It tastes great. It's so good for you that even the most negative marketing programs against hemp are going to eventually fail, which, which they have. Now we're at that point where an opportunity has been uh, has befallen all of us where suddenly we can access a medicine that's been available to our ancestors. Our ancestors ate hemp leaf as a salad green. Our ancestors ate hemp seed as a source of protein and omega-3 fatty acids. Our ancestors, of course, used hemp to produce fibers and ropes and even textiles for clothing. So all of these opportunities have been there before, but now we get to bring them to that next level of technology. And what I love about this is that even industrial hemp is capable of bringing us that very thing we need right now, which is protection of our nervous system. That's what CBD is all about. We have an epidemic in America, for example, 25% of the population is on some kind of anti-anxiety medication or anti-depression medication or some kind of a mental disorder medication. Well, all of these things can be supported, helped, or even alleviated by CBD. So there's nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. And the idea of hemp and CBD is here now. 
What is your experience as an entrepreneur exploiting hemp? And so few people are aware how long it's already been around and why it's good stuff, whereas it's been forbidden for so long. It really has created the opportunity for Naturally Splendid. The fact that it was prohibited for so many years and sat there on a shelf while other crops were commercialized has created the opportunity for all of us on this panel today. The fact that you can only have scare tactics for so long, and this is what David, uh, to reinforce what he is saying, there was a big scare campaign in the 40s about marijuana, industrial hemp, and all the th bad things that it could possibly do to you. And there were other products that were brought on behind it. Instead of using hemp for paper, they started cutting down trees. And instead of using hemp for fiber, they started making petrol, and really putting a big burden on the environment. As the world becomes more aware of the environment. It's one of the drivers for hemp because it's such a wonderful plant. It actually leaves the ground in better condition after it grows, unlike other crops like cotton that takes so much of the nutrient out of the ground. Hemp puts it back in. So it can only be hidden for so long and people can only be misled and scared for so long. I think the internet has helped immensely for people to do their own research and find out the truth about hemp. It's undeniable what the nutritional value is. It's undeniable the medicinal um, benefits of it. It hasn't been around for 6,000 years and been used by civilization the world over for any other reason that it's an amazing plant and it simply is what it is. We are just beginning to understand the full benefit of this and the world very much wants hemp to come online now. We are seeing regulations the world over change. Um, geographical regions that have been very adverse to drugs, and I'm thinking about Asia, where even the lightest of drugs are prohibited, are now accepting industrial hemp as food, as functional food, and as medicine. And this is the opportunity. In the United States of America, only 1% of the people are even aware that hemp is a functional food. 4% of the people in Canada that feeds the world with industrial hemp, just 4% of us know the functional and health benefits of this product. So we are at the very beginning of what will be a very big market. This will follow in the steps of other agricultural crops out of Canada, such as canola, that started off as a very small niche crop and is now a multi-billion dollar success story. Hemp will be that next multi-billion dollar success story. You export hundreds of tons to South Korea. Yeah. What did they discover in it that they want so much of it now? You know, it, it was like night and day. There was small amounts of the product going into South Korea uh, for a couple of years. And then they did a couple of shows, talk shows, where they talked about the health benefits of hemp. And it began to catch on and, and catch fire in South Korea. They have an unusual opportunity there because of the what they have as a home shopping channel. But there's no better way to tell the benefits of this plant than to have a show where they can talk about how to use it and if you use it properly, the health benefits of it. It's very tough to get that messaging across in other jurisdictions when the bag or the container is simply sitting on the shelf. But when you have an opportunity to educate the masses, and that's what the difference is, the educating of the masses, the market took off. And we now ship, as you said, hundreds of tons of industrial hemp, hemp seed, which we call hemp hearts, um, to South Korea. And that is just the first product, the opportunity for hemp oils and proteins and cannabinoids, specifically cannabidiol, we are just starting to penetrate the Asian region, and it is a fantastic opportunity. Cotton is known for needing a lot of pesticides. Yeah. How much chemicals do you need to grow hemp? You don't. What, none? You, you That's bad business for, the, <laughs> for buyer. Well, it, 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 it is. And, and not only does cotton use an, an incredibly large amount of pesticides, it also consumes massive amounts of water. David probably knows the stats better than I do as far as how much water like a sim simple cotton t-shirt needs. It's like hundreds of gallons of for, for one t-shirt where hemp it's survives. Something like 100 gallons. Yeah. But even, even worse on the pesticide levels because I spent a lot of time working near cotton farms seven sprays in a season every season so year after year after year it accumulates so you can imagine seven years later that's 49 applications of pesticides where hemp can be grown without any and again what you were saying is that cotton 
is not only pulling a lot of water, it's pulling a lot of minerals from yeah. the soil. It depletes the soil. And hemp restores the soil and actually is a carbon sequestration plant. So it's drawing in this carbon that we're blowing into the atmosphere through burning fossil fuels. It's drawing it back into the earth. And this is why hemp is not only the plant of the future, but it's the solution for the future of environmentally friendly farming. To draw CO2 from the air, you can have a forest or you can have a hemp field. What's the comparison? They're very comparable, actually. In terms of an annual crop, nothing compares to hemp in sequestering carbon from the atmosphere. Obviously, a forest is going to be even superior, especially an old growth forest. So we're always going to want to have that opportunity to plant more trees and, and sequester more carbon, but then their farming will always exist. So which crops are we going to farm environmentally? What are sustainable crops that will help the atmosphere and draw down greenhouse gases? Hemp leads in that field. A forest takes 25 years to grow till you can cut it. How long does it take for a hemp field to grow till great, you cut it? Great question. Four months. So you can, yeah. you can harvest it three times a year? Actually, you can't. For right now, we're working with a, a single crop in Canada, and it actually we have, have it down to about 11 or 12 weeks, David. And that's the most amazing part. I just when I take a look at things like cutting down old forest, old forest for for paper, and ridiculous uses when that could all come from hemp. Why are we cutting down trees that are hundreds of years old that will never be replaced in our lifetime when you can grow hemp in 11 weeks? It just makes no sense whatsoever. Um, it's one of the reasons why Naturally Splendid was formed. We believed passionately about working positively in the environment. And in coming from Canada, where we have many great forests, it's tragic to see them cut down for one use for paper for once, and that forest is gone in our lifetime. Then when you can grow hemp in 11 weeks, I cannot for the life of me figure out why we are not doing that in a more significant manner right now. But that's what creates the opportunity for us again. So someday I'll be sitting here, not in a cotton shirt, but in a hemp shirt? Absolutely you will. And um, what more material could you produce with the, the part of the plant you're actually not using now? You know, we, we right now are looking for a single hemp plant that has multi-uses. Um, what we grow for um, food is not necessarily the same one that we grow for fiber. And now we're looking for um, hemp breeds that also have high CBD. So if somebody begins to develop a plant or, or the breed that is good for fiber and good for oil with high CBD in it, we have just now created the trifecta of power. You've already taken a plant that has an amazing attributes and combined them into one even more beneficial plant. Um, they're using fiber in such applications as Mercedes, Porsche, Boeing airplanes are using fiber to create these aircrafts. Um, in 1942, Henry Ford made a car, a body made of, of hemp and a couple of other products, agricultural products, Sisal, I believe. Um, it was 10 times the strength of, of steel. It was a fraction of the weight. We did this in the 40s. And yet we went in another direction through these scare tactics that were launched on North America in particular. And we got away from what this amazing plant, but we're getting back to it now. And we're using these fibers for amazing things in places such as Porsche and, and Mercedes. And that is just the very beginning of this opportunity. Yasha, if you use hemp for medical purposes, yes. you must be sure it's clean. Yes. There can't be any residues of uh, pesticides or whatsoever. Right. How do you test that and why is well, hemp good Quality for that? is very important. Um, we test all of our products uh, regarding pesticides, microbiology, and heavy metals. So we can be sure that none of those can be detected and we can sell it to our customers and they don't have to worry about it. Great story. Thank you very much, Joshua, David, Craig, for joining in the Comcap Media Roundtable about hemp, the multi-billion dollar crop. This was the first part. Please mail us your comments and questions to roundtable at Comcap Media and see you for the second part.